for today's video, we will be talking about alkylation of terminal alkynes. And so for this, we would start with a, a terminal alkyne, and it would be reacting with um, NaNH2, but also NaNH3, comma NH3, okay, in liquid form. Uh, the NH3 is not really that important. But now we'll be forming it uh, underneath, it will be an alkyl halide. So a carbon connected to an halogen element, so iodine, chlorine, or bromine. In this case, we see that there's one, two carbons connected to this um, halogen element. So from this, you can just redraw the terminal alkyne that we have here. So like this. Now all we do now is add the carbon. So we have something like this. Stretch it out, and there we go. So now we have one and two carbons, and the iodine would be on the side. Um, it's not important uh, to draw the um, the halogen element in the when, when only doing the product, but uh, when doing the mechanism, it is actually important because you'll see the whole picture. But this is the answer for this um, part. So now if we have this other question, now we have a structure that will look like this, a terminal alkyne, right? And this is a reacting with the same reagents, okay? So Na, NH2, or NH3 in liquid form. That's our first step. Second step would be our, whatever we want to add. And so from here, um, instead of doing two carbons, we can actually add three. Okay, we have one, two, and three carbons, right? So we should redraw our structure that we have, our terminal alkyne, and then add the carbons that we must uh, have. Like this. So now we have, let me redraw that. Something like this. And then we have one, two, and three carbons. And plus our iodine that we have made. Uh, again, it's not important, it's not really important to add the iodine to uh, our product because we're just doing the products, but for the mechanism, it'll be important. How about this next uh, structure that we have? Cyclohexane with a terminal alkyne. So here we will use our, uh, the reagents we had been using. NaNH2 and then NH3, okay. Our second reagent is that um, if we had something like this, okay. So we would redraw our structure. And now all we do is just add how much carbon we have to add one, two, and three. So three carbon, so that's what we do. Draw a terminal alkyne. One, two, three. As you can see, one, two, and three. Now also we have the iodine. I go short. Okay, this is our answer for this product. Again, as you can see from here, um, when drawing this, we had made it. This is this carbon right here is a primary carbon, right? Because it's only connected to one carbon, and that's what we want. We don't want to add it to carbons that would look like this. Okay, this is this right here. This carbon right here in the middle, the tertiary carb, uh, secondary carbon, or we don't want to add it to a carbon that looks like this. All right, this carbon in the middle is a tertiary carbon connected to three carbons. So these are not good to use. Well, we only want to use a primary carbon connected to the alkyl halide, which is a carbon connected to the halogen element. Now let's do the mechanism for this. So if we have a problem with this, and this is reacting with the same reagents we had been using, so Na, NH2, 
with NH3 liquid. And now we will react this with a alkyl halide. So a carbon hydrogen chain connected to a halogen element. So in this case, I'll use iodine. And in this case, we see that there is one and two carbons. So we should have two carbons connected in our chain. First step is to use our first reagent, which is the Na NH2. NH2 with a two lone pairs and a negative charge. It will grab the lone pair will grab that hydrogen. And the hydrogen will give off its electrons to that carbon to form a lone pair with a negative charge. So let's redraw a molecule. So now we have something like this, okay, with a negative charge. And now we have removed the hydrogen, a single hydrogen. So we can move on to our second step, which is the adding the alkyl halide. So in this case, we do bring on the exact form. And now in this case, um, the lone pair would actually go attack the carbon that is directly attached to the halogen element. So this carbon right here, okay. In this case, what happens is that the electrons will expel and give it off to iodine. And so we would have a final reaction that would look like this. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have one, two carbons that we had before. One and two. So this is our final answer for this mechanism. But also we have the, uh, the plus iodine, the negative charge, but it's not really that important. Okay, okay let's do another example if we have this structure. And it has a terminal alkyne, right? And so from this, uh, let's just react it with our same reagents, right? NaNH2 over an LK halide. Let's say make it something like this. Okay, so in the carbon, we should have one, two, and three carbons added to our structure. So we see that there is a hydrogen over here on the end of the carbon. So NH2 would come in for our first reagent. One of the lone pairs grabs a hydrogen, and this will kick off. Uh, the electron to carbon to give it a negative charge. So from here we would have a structure that would look like this Negative charge also remember there's NH3 that has been made, but it's not really that important <clears throat> So from here we add our secondary agent would be this so we have to add um, Three carbons, okay, so from here <laughs> Set our stuff that so the lone pair would go and attack the carbon that has that is directly attached to the iodine. So here, and that will expel, kick off the iodine, and it'll give a reaction that would forcing it to be like this. Which will give us a final product of this again we have one two and three carbons and that is what we want all right let's do another mechanism for this so if we had uh this structure and it's added with the same reagents we have been using so we have nanh2 uh second we have our halide um third actually let's add another nanh2 Okay, and then finally for fourth, we'd add our uh, another alkyl halide. So something like this. Okay, as you can see, we have uh, one, one, two, and three carbons. On this alkyl halide, we have one and two carbons. So they must be added to our structure, original structure. So first, we'll start with the first reagent, is the Na, NaNH2. So we have the NH2. Again, the sodium Na is in a spectator ion, so it doesn't really do much. One of the lone pairs on NH2 would go and grab that hydrogen. That hydrogen gives off an electrons to carbon to form a lone pair. So we have a reaction that would be like this. 
one pair right here was a negative charge. But again, we have we have formed the NH3, right? Because it grabbed that hydrogen, but it's not that important in this reaction. From here, we use our secondary agent, would be the alkyl halide. So like this, the lone pair on carbon goes and grabs the carbon that is attached directly to the halogen element. This electron gives us electrons to iodine, so then we'll have a reaction that would look like this. Oops. Okay, like this. Now we start with our third reagent. Again, the NaNH2. Negative charge with two lone pairs from here. This lone pair will go and grab the other hydrogen. Okay, we must remove the hydrogen. And this hydrogen gives off the electrons to that carbon to form a lone pair with a negative charge. It's attached to that carbon with a triple bond, still with this uh, two carbons that we have added. Now we use our final reagent would be the alkyl halide. So we would add this structure. Something like this, right? It'll go and grab the carbon that is directly attached to that halogen element. It gives off an electrons to iodine. And so we would have a product that would form like this. Carbon attached to the other carbon with this and that. So let's count the carbons that we have. We have one and two, three carbon, and we have one, two carbon over here, which is exactly what we want from our reagents.